radiation, ultraviolet rays that cause uh, uh, sun burning and tanning are causing plants to go through all kinds of, of, of hell up in the high altitudes that they've never before experienced. This one guy is a, that I know is a, um, a botanist, and he's a, at uh, about 6,000 feet, uh, basically in the foothills on the western side of the Rockies. I won't go any more than that because I don't want to betray a confidence there. But he's been following a particular uh, kind of a wart, which is a, uh, a kind of a plant, not a thing that grows on you, but this little short-leafed uh, wart plant. And, he, and it's it never had problems until two years ago, and it's in severe s- distress now, as is the entire ecosystem that it's a part of. So things are changing at a huge level. I think the shadow government is taking the responsibility of trying to shove a barrier up there between us and the radiation. And the reason that they're doing it the way they're doing, one of the reasons is that if they had to officially announce it, they'd have to go through all the lawsuits and the environmental impact and all of that kind of stuff. And there's just simply no time. And yeah, it might kill two or three or four million people just because of the chemicals and stuff up there. But on the other hand, it might save us. That is one uh, that that explanation has some validity, although I'm sure that's not anywhere near the total story. You know, that's a shame because there are children who they they don't know what it's like to not have cameras in school. They don't know what it's like to not live under the Patriot Act, and they don't know what it's like to have a yellow sun. Well, the latter they will never have any any knowledge of because it is likely we're looking at a multi-generational process here if you go back into the uh, historical records a great deal and bear in mind i'm a very paranoid fellow so i saw these signs that suggested to me that the planet is not behaving as it should so i got real paranoid and did a lot of research and i read a lot so i just read and read and read and allowed it all to absorb and then i started cross-connecting all of these things and you start seeing that patterns existed in ancient text that seem to indicate that the periods around the beginning of these long count cycles that the Maya, coincidentally, I mean, it just is a nice little temporal marker, if you will, for us to discuss a common year and have a common frame of reference. And so we can say that the same year that they started the long count that we're in now, that ends in 2012, was also a year of cataclysmic earthquakes in uh, northern India. But it was nowhere near as bad as the cycle that started 5,115 years before that. And so why should they be on harmonics? I don't know. Why do the planets align themselves in an orbital sequence that is a harmonic basis around the sun? Why do we have harmonics in every part of reality? It is just a fractal um, component of our, our reality that everything is based on vibration. And at some level, all of these vibrations cooperate and we can have these harmonic resonances that all work out. And so it may be that what we're looking at is something that is harmonically related to a number of generations, and it is just curious that the Maya, the Sumeria, the the Puranas, which are mean, um, uh, or or which are are predate the Veda in the Hindu as well as the Sumeria, Sumeric text all go to the idea that five generations of humans were required. to exist before the the um, last cycle calmed back down, and so I have some knowledge of having read some some Sanskrit text about this particular area in northwestern India on the coast uh, between Pakistan and India in there uh, that is called the Harappan Valley, and this uh, ancient Sumerian or ancient Sanskrit text that I that I read about it was from this particular headmaster who had a village there and he talked about the terrible time he had with his village because one day they had a 7-0 earthquake and then three weeks later they had another one and then it just kept going and going and they just get to the point where they had these earthquakes pretty much every week that were coming along and knocking down their village and finally they just stopped rebuilding after a year or more of these earthquakes and then the record was that they lived for about 18 months in tents because there was just no point to solid structures. And then they just got out because they figured any place had to be better than that place. And that's where the record ended of this particular little civilization. And these people just kind of left that region. But that was coincidentally the ending of the previous cycle to the cycle before the one we're in. So how did the Mayans long count cycle end up 
um, linking up with times of earthquake activity and this kind of stuff. Well, the l- common link is that the Maya coordinated all of their calendars, all of their rounds, which were actual physical devices, all interconnected into a giant solar calendar, and they knew things about the sun that we are just now discovering. And so it's just, like I say, it's multi-generational. So the generations now that don't know the, the yellow sun uh, will live in a white sun and maybe even get close to blue-white by the time it's all done. That'd be really interesting to go back and look at um, Native American prophecy, other prophecies like that, to see if they talk about any of that. It would, and the uh, the cross connects, and why all this should be. But history, humans, I mean, if we look at things at a very broad level, we know that universe likes us because there's a lot of us. It likes humans and it favors humans because we've had the absolute crap kick out of us, and we keep crawling back, and we're resilient and so on. So anytime I hear all these doom and gloom stories, I always say to myself, especially if I if we're not in a position to discuss it, but I, I always say to myself, yeah, but. Because they always say, uh, you know, oh, thus and so is going to happen. We're going to lose all of our electricity. And that's quite true. We may indeed have a giant solar flare that takes out all the electricity in the northern hemisphere. And if we just accepted that, 90% of the population is going to die within the next year simply because of not having electricity and the hardships that it's going to bring on us. Yeah, but the minute that that electricity goes down, there's going to be all kinds of old farts out there like myself that are tinkering and, and fiddling around. And, you know, there will be little local pockets of uh, uh, cooperation and creativity, and we'll start rebuilding. That's just the way humans are. So, yes, there's always doom and gloom, and yes, all of it's factual, and we're going to get a big kawump, but we're going to start rebuilding instantly, those of us that are left, and we're going to come back bigger and better than before. The problem with all of this in terms of an idea is that sometime back, about 11,800 years ago, we got hit with such a big kawump that it's taken us all this time to come back to it. And even if the expanding planet model does not have um, giant... Uh, continent uh, uh, sweeping oceans, we're still going to get hit with enough stuff over these next couple of years that uh, a lot of us won't make it through, and those of us that do make it through may have to struggle for 20 years uh, living without electricity before we start getting things back together in any kind of a national sense or global sense, because we have to stop thinking nationally. It's absurd for me to worry about the national uh, uh, artificial national border that was created by people that intended that I be their slave. And I kid you not, uh, the uh, Masons and everybody that started the whole process off of nation states and all of this, it's all divide and conquer. So oh, I'm actually absolutely. glad to see the Arab or the, uh, the Muslim peoples, the Islamic peoples, all getting together uh, across these artificial boundaries of the nation states. And sooner than later, those will disappear, and you'll be just dealing with humans. Well, you're absolutely right. We always speak about a global shift in consciousness, and everybody goes, oh, that's hippy-dippy nonsense. But what we mean is to recognize that these states don't exist, that we are sovereign human beings, that we are, creator, that we are created by the one true God. We're flesh and blood human beings, and nobody has the authority to govern over us except for ourselves. Correct. Let's and go. usually, if someone comes along and they say something, my response instantly, because I'm a raspy fellow, is to say, basically, uh, warranto, under whose authority? You know, there's no authority over myself. Exactly. You know, I, don't care, I don't care who you are. <laughs> if exactly. You want to debate, let's get into it. That echoes last week's broadcast. That's a fantastic synchronicity right there. Uh, Roger, Greg, James, Mike, everybody who's holding, um, I know you guys have been holding for a long time. We're going to get to everybody, so don't go anywhere. Let's go right now. Well, first of all, 866-841-1065, 866-841-1065 if you want to get involved in the discussion. And let's go to Mike from Arizona. Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Mike, are you there? I'm there, Chris. What's up? Hey, how are you doing? Very nice to talk to you. I'm doing very well. Yeah, you too. I'm, uh, your show is going so well. I'm so happy for you, man. Mike has been calling in ever since our Block Talk days. It's fantastic. Cool. So how are you these days? Very good, very good. You're on air with Cliff I. Well, Cliff, I have a question for you. Actually, it's a two-part question. I, w- I would like to uh, see if you could uh, revert back to the chemtrail subject um i live in northern arizona and i've lived in arizona a good portion of my life and up here it's a, it's a beautiful country but lately uh, you can see them 
all the time, and, and I have people that uh, that I'm friends with up here that don't believe that sort of thing. And I'd, I have uh, one of those guys in my house listening right now. I'm outside, but uh, I'd like you to elaborate on that and just sort of uh, maybe give a beginner's point of view on that because it's so prevalent up here. And secondly, uh, about the Japanese earthquake, uh, BBC stated that this is due to global warming. I would like to hear what you have to say about that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for the call, Mike. Uh, BBC is a known uh, propaganda mouthpiece for uh, the Queen and Chucky and the rest of the Illuminati there, so um, I don't necessarily put a lot of credence into anything coming out of their uh, news thing, although I do occasionally watch their Doctor Who show, um, which actually has, far, actually has far more truth in it, I'm sure, than most of their news. So, so uh, it sure is. It sure is. Uh, you know, some of their space aliens are even better than. Um, <laughs> but, but I won't go into that. I, anyway, though, the I thing sure about the Kim, <laughs> isn't it terrible? Yeah, um, the Kim Trails. I first yes. saw these. I I could not be convinced by my mother. My mother is. You know, I figured, oh, batty old woman out there. You know, she's been out in her yard and is working too hard. And the sun got her because she kept trying to convince me that there were airplanes up there and they were spraying something. And I told her about contrails, and we argued for the better part of a year. And then one day, I happened to take one of the boats I was messing with out into Puget Sound, and I was out there with a. Um, little ki- tiny uh, trimaran, a little uh, paddling around, kayaky kind of thing. And I was out there, and I had to stay for the entire tide shift, which, of course, is six hours, uh, simply wow. because of where I'd put in. And you couldn't get out until a really high tide. And while I was out there, I sat and I watched over southern Puget Sound as five airplanes flew in just beautiful precision back and forth, and they made this giant grid of all of this for all the world. It looked like smoke. And I was just flabbergasted. That's what I saw this morning. I mean, just a perfect crosshatch in the pure blue sky, and it was. Go on, I'm sorry. I know, and it just, well, I was going to say, it really irritates me now because from 1997, when I first had that encounter, or 98, until now, uh, we've lost our summers. I have no, I can't go out and bike ride in the, in the, um, spring because we don't have a spring. We don't have decent weather to speak of. And there's always this yuck up in the sky. And it's really made, made it um, a whole lot more depressing. We only used to get 60 clear days a year up here in Puget Sound country. And now I swear we're down to nine. And it, it's really just very depressing. I, I, I think people across the country should be aware of this. Look up. Look up in the sky. You can see the Yeah, but it, here's the thing, though, Guy. Uh, I've now come to realize that it's, uh, it's probably karmically wrong to go on out there and try and irritate the sleeping sheeple until they wake up. That's you true. Know, That's- you know, it's never bought, got me anything, and when they do wake up, it's nice to be there and say, oh, by the way, let me explain a few things to you. But it doesn't do yeah. any good to try and explain to them until they ask, you know? Well, you should be aware of it, like you're doing, like Chris and Sheree are doing. You have to be aware. At least be aware at a minimum. Yes, yeah. But it's it's gotten really uh, scary out there with uh, the number of people, and we're starting to to start to shred into the sheeple's contentment with things like the uh, uh, many of the unexplainable. Uh, nature of our reality. Once it gets to the point where they can't believe anymore, they're going to have a mental breakdown, and they're going to need a lot of people like us out there to say, "Sit down, watch this little YouTube video. When you're done with that, come and talk to me." You know. Well, people are giving in. They're giving in to the the, the falseness, the the false reality. They're giving in. You know, and you got to slap them in the face or something. They're giving no, in. Wake no, up. no, no, no. You can't. You can't uh, because. You're intruding on their karmic process. You've got enough stuff to do, by the way, just keeping yourself sane and together as you go forward from this point on without taking the added burden of trying to wake all these people up. Uh, and also, it doesn't really work, and I think it's actually uh, going to do them a